Kodiak bears are the biggest bears alive today, but might still lose a size battle to a prehistoric monster that hasn't walked the earth in over 10,000 years. The short-faced bear wasn't just big, it was built like a predator on overdrive. Taller, leaner, faster, and maybe even meaner. But what made it different? First things first, the name short-faced doesn't mean this bear was lacking in the face department. It had a relatively short snout compared to other bears, giving it a somewhat flat, pushed-in face. But don't let the name fool you. Everything else about Arctodus was supersized. This beast roamed North America during the late Pleistocene and is believed to be one of the largest carnivorous land mammals ever. How large? Adult males likely averaged around 800 kilograms or 1,800 pounds, and the biggest could reach up to 950 kilograms or 2,090 pounds. Standing on all fours, an enormous male short-faced bear stood about 1.7 meters five and a half feet, at the shoulder. This short-faced giant lived all across what's now the US, Canada, and Mexico, from open woodlands to plains. It was the uncrowned king of the Ice Age. No cage could hold it. Now, let's introduce the contender from modern times. The Kodiak bear is essentially a grizzly bear that won the Alaskan food lottery. Isolated on the Kodiak archipelago in Alaska for the last 12,000 years, Kodiak bears evolved with abundant resources and no competition, growing into massive omnivores. They are the largest subspecies of brown bear, in fact, the largest bears in the world, alongside polar bears. A big male Kodiak typically weighs between 300 to 600 kilograms, 660 to 1320 pounds in the wild but can hit up to 680 kilograms, 1,500 pounds or more, when fattened up for winter. Standing height? About 3 meters, 9 to 10 feet on hind legs for a large male, and roughly 1.5 meters, 5 feet at the shoulder. They're covered in thick fur, ranging from sandy blonde to dark chocolate brown, and they sport the classic grizzly bear hump on their shoulders. These Alaskan heavyweights live only on the Kodiak Islands, enjoying a relatively pristine habitat with lots of fish and plants to munch on. There are around 3,500 of them roaming those islands, which is a healthy population. Definitely not an endangered species. What's on the menu when you're one of the biggest bears to ever live? During the Ice Age, Arctodus simus lived alongside mega herbivores like giant ground sloths, camels, horses, prehistoric bison, and young mammoths. This bear had to eat thousands of calories a day, and plants alone wouldn't cut it. Evidence suggests Arctodus was a hypercarnivore, or at least a very carnivorous omnivore. It likely hunted or scavenged large herbivores, which were abundant prey. With its long legs, one theory says Arctodus could have been a fast runner, chasing down prey across the plains. Another theory argues it was more of a super scavenger, using its huge size to scare off smaller animals from their kills and claim the carcasses for itself. Perhaps it did both. If it found an easy target, it would hunt. If something else made the kill, Arctodus would happily bully its way to a free meal. And it wasn't purely carnivorous. Studies suggest it also ate plants opportunistically. But compared to a modern brown bear, Arctodus was leaning heavily toward meat. Picture it digging into a 600-pound carcass of an Ice Age herbivore, like it's a barbecue joint. Vegetarian option? Maybe a bit of berries or roots here and there, but meat was its main course. Now contrast that with our Kodiak bear. Despite being a giant, the Kodiak is not a picky eater at all. In fact, it's often more herbivore than carnivore. Kodiaks are true omnivores, and their diet changes with the seasons. In spring, they'll chomp on fresh green plants and grasses. In summer and fall, they hit the jackpot, salmon. The Kodiak archipelago is famous for its salmon runs, and these bears line the rivers like it's a sushi buffet. Fish is an important part of their diet, providing the high fat they need. They become expert fishermen, snatching salmon from the water and often just eating the fattest parts and leaving the rest for gulps. Talk about taking the best portions! They'll also gorge on berries in late summer, salmonberry, blueberry, you name it, to fatten up. Interestingly, 
Plants and berries make up more of a Kodiak bear's diet than meat does. They generally do not hunt large mammals for food very often. It's just not worth the effort for them, since plants and fish are plentiful. On rare occasions, a Kodiak might prey on a deer or scavenged carcass, but few Kodiak bears bother to chase and kill mammals. Why risk injury chasing a swift deer when you have salmon practically jumping into your mouth and juicy berries everywhere? So a Kodiak's menu is a five-star variety. Grass, roots, berries, nuts, and animals, fish mostly. They need to pack on huge fat reserves for winter hibernation, so come late summer, a big Kodiak will eat up to 90 pounds of food a day and gain several pounds per day in weight. How did these bears behave in their day-to-day -day lives? We have to play detective here, since no one was around with a GoPro 20,000 years ago. But we can infer a few things. Arctodus simus, being such a large predator and or omnivore, was probably solitary, like most bears. You wouldn't want another 2,000-pound competitor in your territory eating your food. So, Mr. Shortface likely roamed alone over vast distances. Home range size for such a beast must have been enormous, perhaps hundreds of square miles, because it needed a lot of food, and the prey in any one area would deplete fast. Was it a fast runner? There's debate. Its long legs suggest it could run faster than today's bears, but some scientists think it wasn't built for sustained chases or agility. It might have been more of a long-distance tracker, able to cover ground efficiently to patrol its territory and sniff out carcasses from miles away. Speaking of sniffing, bears have incredible noses. A Kodiak can smell a rotting fish from miles away, and Arctodus likely had an excellent sense of smell too. When it came to fighting or aggression, Arctodus had no equal except possibly another Arctodus. It probably didn't fear much. However, even a giant bear wouldn't be invulnerable. A pack of wolves or humans with spears could harass it, and a protective mammoth mother could be dangerous. Still, in one-on-one -on -one terms, Arctodus was likely the apex of apex predators in its realm. One more thing. Did Arctodus hibernate? Well, we're not entirely sure. If it lived in areas with harsh winters and limited food, it probably did have to den up like modern bears. But if it could roam to milder areas or find food year-round, maybe some didn't hibernate. Kodiak bears, despite their intimidating size, are usually peaceful loners. Unless food is involved or a female has cubs to protect. They are solitary most of the year, each bear doing its own thing. However, because Kodiaks live in a rich environment, their home ranges can overlap a lot. Kodiak bears have some of the smallest home ranges of any brown bear population. Why? Well, because they don't need to travel far for food. Plenty of resources are packed into the Kodiak Islands. In summer, dozens of Kodiak bears might congregate along the same salmon stream, practically having a party. To avoid fights in these crowded fishing spots, Kodiaks have a social hierarchy and body language to communicate. They'll huff, snort, or stare to warn each other, and the smaller ones yield to the bigger ones. They've been observed forming sort of friendships, or at least tolerances. For example, the same bears might fish near each other year after year, having worked out who's boss. Still, fights can happen, especially big males might clash over territory or mating rights. Kodiaks are generally not actively aggressive toward humans unless provoked or very hungry. But one should never get complacent. They are wild animals capable of great violence if threatened. They've interacted with the native Alutic people for centuries, and more recently with hunters who came to Kodiak for big game trophies. Kodiaks do hibernate each winter in dens they dig out of hillsides, sleeping off their big fat reserves from October to April. Why one disappeared and the other persevered? About 12 to 13,000 years ago, there was a massive wave of extinctions known as the late Pleistocene extinctions. In North America, many large animals died out. Mammoths, mastodons, saber-toothed cats, giant ground sloths, and yes, the short-faced bear among them. The exact cause is still debated, but for Arctodus, scientists think a few factors combined for a perfect storm. Climate change was a big one. The Ice Age ended. Ecosystems shifted. 
Forests expanded where open prairies had been, and some areas became more arid. The prey that Arctodus relied on either went extinct or declined sharply. Arctodus, as an enormous animal, would have had trouble finding enough food if the big game got scarce. Human competition might have played a role too. Early humans were efficient hunters and could have outcompeted Arctodus for prey, or at least scavenged enough that less was left for the bears. Also, humans could have directly hunted young short-faced bears or occupied the caves they might use. So in an adapt or die scenario, Arctodus unfortunately fell on the die side. By around 11 to 12,000 years ago, the last giant short-faced bear faded away leaving only fossils. Kodiak bears, on the other hand, are a success story of adaptation and luck. They descended from brown bears that did survive the Ice Age. Brown bears are omnivores and extremely flexible in diet. That was a key advantage. While Arctodus was struggling to find megafauna to eat, brown bears were switching over to whatever was available – roots, berries, smaller animals. That flexibility let brown bears weather the end of the Ice Age. By chance, some of those bears got isolated on Kodiak Island, which turned out to be a paradise for them. No other large predators and an ocean full of fish at their doorstep. For 10,000 plus years, Kodiak bears have lived relatively undisturbed, expanding into a healthy population. They didn't face the pressures Arctodus did. Even when humans arrived on Kodiak, it was in low numbers, and the native people respected and managed their interaction with bears. In modern times, yes, humans have guns and there is hunting, but it's controlled, and the habitat is largely protected by a refuge. So Kodiak bears continue to thrive. They're a great example of how being a jack-of-all-trades omnivore can help a species survive upheavals. If you took away the salmon, a Kodiak could still eat plants. If you took away the berries, they'd scavenge dead animals or dig for clams on the beach. They have backup plans on top of backup plans for food. Arctodus had one plan – find big prey, and when that failed, so did the species. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.